today we're gonna get smart in five minutes. Woo <laughs> so the first thing we're gonna do is talk about vulnerability remediation. Oh fun, my favorite topic. What is vulnerability remediation? Yeah, so vulnerability remediation is when you have to take all the output from these software scanners that are telling you where you have vulnerabilities running and then do something with that information. And a lot of times it means understanding like the severity score of a vulnerability. So if it's critical or high or low severity, you may take different actions based on that or um, if it's running in your production systems or not, you may have a different process for how to handle that stuff. Maybe it's something that you don't think can be exploited, so that would be a lower priority. So vulnerability remediation is a lot of triaging amongst en engineering and security and platform teams, and it turns into a bit of an arduous process. It sounds like it. I've heard that it just takes a lot of time and people really don't like doing it. Can you get more into that? Like, why does it take so much time? Yeah, I think, you know, one of the reasons is there's a lot of unknowns, a lot of data that's flowing around, a lot of noise. It is hard to pick out the signal to a noise. A lot of times in, when, we, when you get a vulnerability scan, you get what are called false positives. Mm. So you're not even sure if they're true vulnerabilities. So oh. it's a lot of data that's coming that you're just not sure what to do with as an engineering team or as someone that's responsible for a re vulnerability remediation. And what we see talk, what we see happening is uh, a lot of times developer engineers will have spreadsheets and that is how they're managing sort of the vulnerabilities in their systems and that spreadsheet is like who owns this software who knows how to fix it is, are we impacted by this how severe is it and so I think it's a lot of time just going into to, to knowing like what to do with that information and how to handle it and how important it is. And it usually takes a lot of time away from engineers trying to do their day jobs so they don't really enjoy, <laughs> I would say, vulnerability remediation as much as say, uh, building a new feature and pushing it out the door. That makes sense. And that sounds like a terrifying spreadsheet. <laughs> so yeah, let's try to avoid that. Um, I have another question. Um, I hear a lot of people talk about S-bombs I know there's different opinions on it, but could you just talk about like what is an SBOM and how would it come into play in this process? Yeah, so SBOM stands for Software Bill of Materials and a lot of people describe it as a nutrition label on a piece of software. So the way it comes into this conversation around vulnerabilities and vulnerability management is before you even know what software has vulnerabilities, you have to know what software you have or that you're relying on. So an SBOM, theoretically gives you that list of ingredients. This is the software I'm running, and these are the software dependencies it relies on. And then from that SBOM, you can use that and do the vulnerability kind of lookup or vulnerability scan. So it's based on you know, all the software that the SBOM says I have, like what vulnerabilities are showing up in that software. Interesting. Um, do you have any spicy takes on SBOMs that you'd care to share? <laughs> <laughs> Any spicy takes? Well, I think I think the one thing is that I, I don't know how reliable they can be because an attacker is never going to tell you they stuck malicious code in your SBOM. So how do we know that those SBOMs are always the most up-to-date representation of the software that's going into your systems? So that sounds like a big time loss. Can you explain like why it takes so much time and why people complain about it so much. <laughs> yeah, so what I've learned from talking with many developers and security teams is that it's a lot of like unknowns. So it's like, who owns this software that has a vulnerability in it? How do we know how to fix it? Uh, does it even impact us? And so I think just the very nature of triaging is the, is the word to look at figuring out what's applicable or not is uh, a bit of a painful and tedious process. Uh, many teams use spreadsheets and so they will just list in the spreadsheet like the vulnerability, maybe an owner to it, um, how severe it is, maybe the plan action for remediating that vulnerability. So I think it's a lot of spreadsheets, it's a lot of process, it's a lot of who, who knows who, who could even fix the vulnerability. So you can just imagine at a large corporation, if your scanner says, hey, we've got this new critical vulnerability that we need to take care of, like, what do you do next? Who wrote that software? Do we even know how to fix it? Do we know if it's, uh, 
if it's even something that we're gonna be exploited by in production. So I think answering all those questions and then figuring out what to do about it is what makes it such a time. Huh. Time loss. Yeah, I mean, I've heard it <laughs> take, take some companies like thousands of hours to do this work. Yeah, I think we did some research and, and try to try to learn, get more data from companies and, and ask how many engineers are you dedicating to this kind of work or how many hours a week? And we came up with a couple thousand hours at least uh, a year for a company to having to deal with this. So crazy. Yeah, crazy. it's a big problem. It's really crazy. Awesome. <laughs> and and oh, many yeah. companies, they don't want to be spending time on this. So right. Right. <laughs> if you're a uh, a, a company trying to build software for or trying to build an iPhone app or something and for consumers like you don't want to be thinking about having your engineers spend all this time on vulnerability remediation you want them building the features that help make your business grow yeah and I imagine like if you're the engineer working on this you probably it's probably just annoying and you want to ignore it if you can, right? Yes. Because it will slow you down. So. Yes, exactly. Make it go away. Let me get yeah. back to my day job. Yeah. I don't want to deal with this anymore. Right, right. I didn't want to grow up and become a vulnerability remediator. That exactly. Wasn't my, my dream. <laughs> well, there you have it. Now we know what vulnerability remediation is. Thanks, Kim. But I have one final question. Oh boy. Do you have a favorite aquatic animal? I thought you would never ask. <laughs> yes, I actually do, and it's the octopus. Mm. So you may notice that the octopus is Chainguard's logo. And one of the reasons why the octopus came to be Chainguard's logo is because it reminded me of a story that I read in the news about an octopus that would crawl out of its aquarium at night, walk across the floor, sneak into the crustacean aquarium, eat them in the night, and then crawl back into its aquarium. And so that reminded me a lot of the software security problem. The worst types of attacks are when attackers can go in and exfiltrate data without anyone knowing. And so the octopus story reminded me of that. And, and there you have it. Now it's the chain guard logo and we call him Inky or it Inky. <laughs> I had no idea that that was a story. And yeah. thank you for sharing. <laughs> also fascinating yeah. that an octopus crawled across the floor. I know wow. they're fascinating Smart animals. Octopus. <laughs> Well, thank you, Kim, and you just got smart in five minutes. See you next time.